Why isn't homeowner's insurance affordable anymore? I mean, what is happening? New details on a big rate hike request by two insurance companies. News Channel 8's Jeff Patterson joining us live. In well, in this video, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that you can do about it. Nationwide, the cost of getting homeowner's insurance is increasing about 25 to 40 percent year over year. Home insurance costs are on the rise across the country, driven in part by weather-related disasters. Thanks to but in Colorado, where I live, it's even worse. It's gotten over 50% increase from 2019 to 2022, and in the two years since then, it's gotten even worse. Between January 2019 and October 2022, the average Coloradans saw their home insurance premium go up by 51.7%. Let's all remember... According to USAA Today, the average cost of homeowner's insurance for a $500,000 house is $2,100 a year. And because of this, more and more people are having troubles being able to buy a house, being able to qualify for a loan because the insurance is so expensive. So they, they can't buy a house because of the cost of insurance. It's getting more expensive to buy and harder to find home insurance in Colorado. It's and the people that do own houses, a lot of them who can't afford their homeowner's insurance anymore, they're having to sell their houses. And guess who's buying up all of those homes? Huge investment corporations who are then turning around and just renting those homes. So for this next clip, I'm gonna need an appropriate hat because... And while your insurance costs have gone up 25 to 50% or more over the last year, guess how much the CEOs of the biggest insurance companies make every year? Well, let's kind of go over these. The CEO of Farmers made $10 million in 2022. The CEO of Allstate made $19 million in 2022. And the CEO of State Farm made almost 25 million million dollars in 2022. Now, being the good capitalist that I am, I'm not going to get into the conversation or the argument about whether or not these guys deserve that amount of money, but I do have a question to ask. What is it that they do that makes them worth that amount of money? What is it that they do that's any different from what, say, a guy that runs a local business does who's trying to pay himself $100,000 a year? What is it? How much harder are these CEOs working than you're working, for example. And if it weren't bad enough that just the cost of the insurance is getting unaffordable for most people, the deductibles that are being imposed on claims is also getting ridiculous. Just in the last few weeks, we've uh, encountered homeowners. One of them had an $8,000 deductible. One of them had a $20,000 deductible and I mean, you might be thinking, well, $20,000 deductible guy obviously lives in a mansion. No, he has a $400,000 house. The problem is that his deductible is 5% of his home value. So he has a $20,000 deductible. And in fact, I just met with another homeowner who has his, his deductible just increased to $4,000 for his 1,000 square foot home. I mean, this is becoming more and more common. And I've even heard that uh, companies like State Farm and Allstate are pulling out of California. So from what I hear, they're not writing any new policies, new homeowner policies in California. And homeowners in Louisiana and Florida are having to deal with the same thing. So it's even getting harder, even if you could afford it, to actually get insurance. So what's something that you can do to either slow down or stop that massive inflation of the cost of your homeowner's insurance? Stop filing claims. Stop it! I mean it. Seriously, just stop filing claims. Now, I don't mean claims for things that are catastrophic, like if a hurricane hits your house or a tornado or if you have a fire or something like that. Obviously, you have to file claims for something like that. But I'm talking to the homeowners who are, who seem so consistently tempted to file a claim just because it hailed in their neighborhood. Oftentimes they're, 
their first thought is, well, I better call my insurance company and ask them to send somebody out to take a look at my roof. Stop it! Well, in a minute, I'm gonna talk about a couple of other things that you can do besides not filing claims. But for now, this is the biggie. Just stop filing claims. So it seems like homeowners are preconditioned to think that if it hails in their neighborhood, especially if it's got some decent sized hail, that the first thing that they need to do is call their insurance company. Now, I have my theories about why homeowners think that way now. They never used to think that way, but I'm gonna save that for a different video. And like I said, to be sure, there are times when if hail hits your house, you should file a claim right away. And I'm gonna, uh, like I said, I'm gonna go through what the examples are that you should consider filing a claim if hail does hit your house. But if there's been a hailstorm, even if it's got some big hail in it, does that mean you need to call your insurance company and file a claim right away? Probably not. Now, I own a roofing company. Why in the world would I be telling homeowners to not file claims if that's gonna result in them having to get their roofs replaced? Well, it's because I can see what's happening to homeowners. I can see what's happening to people who can't buy homes because they can't afford the insurance. I can see what it's doing to the economy and it's not good. It used to be that people would file claims for damage only if there was major damage, like a major catastrophe, or if there was some sort of major need. But somewhere along the line, all of that changed. But I'm telling you that your roof can perform as needed, as expected for years and years, maybe even decades, with damage that has occurred from a, just a standard hailstorm. So homeowners, how can you know whether or not you should file a claim right away? Well, if the hail has broken glass in your house, or if it's punched holes in your siding, or it's stripped off paint, or if the hail has actually come through the roof into your house, then yeah, for those things, file a claim right away. But if that kind of thing hasn't happened, but yet a hailstorm has still hit your house, please don't call your insurance company right away. Call a roofer first. Call and have somebody else come and inspect your house because when you call your insurance company and you ask them, hey, could you have somebody come out and check my roof? If they send an adjuster out to your house, you have filed a claim. So call a roofer, have a roofer come over to do the inspection, but tell your roofer before he gets up on the roof that you want him to take photos or video and or video of the damage that he can show you when he gets off of the roof. And if the damage looks like what you see on these roofs, well then you should consider filing a claim. But if the damage is just really superficial or especially if you're having troubles even seeing the damage in his photos or in his video, then you're most likely not going to be doing something wrong if you don't file the claim. Okay, but what are some other ways that you can help slow down that rising cost of your homeowner's insurance? Well, for one, if you do replace your roof, put on a better roofing material. If you're wanting to stay with asphalt shingles, put on a good SBS modified asphalt shingle, something like the Certainty Northgate or the Malarkey Legacy. Or if you want a completely indestructible roof, then put on a material like Brava. Putting on a material like that is not only gonna protect your roof from getting damage from a hailstorm in the future, but if it does that, it's going to reduce the number of claims that you have to file, which tells the insurance company that you're a lower risk to that insurance company. And if you put on a material like that, many insurance companies are gonna give you a discount on your insurance rates for having an impact resistant material on your roof. Of course, the other thing that you can do is shop insurance companies. So right now, the most expensive insurance companies to insure a $500,000 house are Shelter, Travelers, Country Financial, and Farmers. So if you're with one of those companies, shop around and find a different insurance company that's not gonna charge you as much but you have to make sure that you're getting the appropriate coverage that you need for your house where your house is located. 
The other thing that you can do is increase your deductible as high as you feel like you can afford. Then take the money that you're saving from the decrease in your insurance premiums. Because when you raise your deductible, that's going to decrease your insurance premiums. So take that money that you're saving and put that into a special savings account for that possibly inevitable time when you may need to replace your roof. Now, am I naive enough to believe that if homeowners did all these things and stopped filing claims, that the cost of homeowners insurance would go back down? Well, I suppose anything is possible, but I doubt that that would happen because then how else is the CEO of State Farm gonna continue to pay himself $25 million a year? Hey, if you feel like you do need to file a claim for damage to your roof, then watch this video right here to see how the whole process is supposed to work. And if you need information on insurance claims and the roofing process together, click this playlist right here.